Welcome to Epidemiology. We're going to talk about the sensitivity and specificity of test results. Frequently, in order to identify people who have a disease or who don't have a disease, we don't know what's happening in the body, whether the person has what we're interested in studying or doesn't. What we do have are the biometric markers and tests that try to identify those biometric markers. Sensitivity and specificity are the characteristics of a test, the things that we can control or manipulate in the test uh, medium that tries best to identify the thing we're trying to identify, usually um, some hormone or uh, biometric component white blood cells, red blood cells, uh, bacteria, virus, RNA, all sorts of other things. Sensitivity and specificity work in tandem to help us describe the accuracy of the test. So sensitivity is the test's ability to deal with positive test results. So when we're calculating sensitivity, we are identifying people who have the disease and out of all the people who have the disease we're interested in, the number of people who have a positive test. In our example here, we're conducting a study to validate sensitivity and specificity of urinalysis in identifying urinary tract infections. We're going to study 374 people. So our 374 is going to go here. We know that 16.09% of all people who have symptoms of a urinary tract infection actually have a UTI. We're only going to test people who have symptoms and so in order to find out how many people have the urinary tract infection we're going to take 374 and multiply that by 0.16 zero nine. That's going to give us about 60 people who have a urinary tract infection. Okay. At the end of our study we know that we have 192 positive test results. 192 people, regardless of whether they had a urinary tract infection or not, have a positive test result. If there's 192 people who have a positive test result out of 374 people who are tested, we know that 182 negative tests were discovered in our study. Finally, 161 of the negative tests actually did not have a UTI. So just because you have a negative test doesn't mean you don't have a UTI. Some people may have a UTI and a negative test result because the test is not identifying that individual's um, characteristics of a urinary tract infection, usually white blood cells. So we're going to put 161 here. 161 of those people of the 182 negative tests actually did not have a urinary tract infection. That leaves 21 people who did not have an, who had a negative test that did have a urinary tract infection. Because there are a total of 60 people who have urinary tract infections and 21 had a negative test result, then we know through deduction that 39 had a positive test result. We also know since 192 positive test results occurred and only 39 actually had the disease that 153 people 153 people sorry for my handwriting there 153 people did not have a urinary tract infection. Out of the total then, there's 314 people in our study who did not have urinary tract infections. This is how we start to identify the calculations um, for sensitivity and specificity. We have to know out of all the people who have the disease or don't have disease what their test results would be. We usually identify that through deduction. Now 153 seems like a lot. These people are usually called a false positive test result. You've probably heard that before. So these people were told they have a urinary tract infection, but they really didn't. They're false positive. These people 
are a false negative. These 21 people were told they had neg they did not have a urinary tract infection when in fact they did. And this is our true positive and our true negative here in the opposite corners. Sensitivity is the, abil the ability of the test to correctly identify people who had the disease in this group right here. So we're going to take 39 and divide that by 60 to give us our sensitivity. And our sensitivity turns out to be uh, about 64.8%. And that's how you calculate sensitivity. Now, that's only dealing with the positive test results. We also need to deal with the negative test results. So, if we look at sensitivity in the same exact problem, we're going to know that there were 39 people here, 21 here, out of the 60, 192, 182, 161, and 153 from our analysis before. Now specificity deals with the people who don't have the, the disease. So the ability of the test to correctly identify those who do not have the disease is specificity And we take the people who are correctly identified as having negative test result and did not have the disease, those true negatives, 161, divided by 314 total people who did not have a urinary tract infection. And that will give us a test of, or a sensitivity of 51.30%. Again, that's the calculation for specificity. So once we have the, the information in the 2x2 two two table, it's fairly easy to calculate sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity being the dealing with the positive test results, or the positive, the people who have the disease, and specificity dealing with the people who do not have disease. Now, there are a few things that you need to consider when dealing with sensitivity and specificity. The first are that sensitivity and specificity are unique characteristics of the test. They are going to remain constant. They are the um, titrations or the chemical reactions in the test medium itself. It won't test regard. It won't change the sensitivity and specificity, regardless of the population we use them on. They're usually selected these tests based on their ability to correctly identify people with the disease or sensitivity and their cost. Unfortunately, highly sensitive tests are very expensive in most cases. So sometimes um, we use instead highly specific tests uh, to help screen people out. So you might not have a very sensitive test, meaning you don't capture everybody who is who has the disease, but everybody who gets a negative or, or everybody who doesn't have the test ends up with a negative test result. That happens uh, fairly frequently and we use it quite often. We, call, we regularly call those screening tests. Those are always followed up by a diagnostic test. Now the way we deal with that is um, because sometimes that single test, even if it's um, highly specific, is not sufficient to diagnose a person with the disease, we use sequential testing or tests that um, a second test in sequence of the first test. The first thing we deal, do is test everyone with our first test. Secondly, we test just those who are positive in the first test with the second test. Looks something like this. So we start our second, our first test with the information we had from before. We have 39 and 21 and 153 out of the 192 and 161 here and 182 
out of the total of 374 people in our subjects, 60 people who had the disease, and 314 who didn't actually have the disease. Now this group of people is going to get a secondary test. They become the population in our second test or our sequential test. So we can't put our finger on these 39 people out of the 192 that have a positive test. We're not sure which one of those 39 um, or which one of those 192 are represented by these 39, but we do know that there are 39 out of that group that actually have the disease. We also know that 153 do not, and that's 192 uh, people who we're going to give the second test to. We're going to take a sensitivity of 0.8741, or 87.41 percent. We're going to multiply that by these 39 people, 0.8741. And that 39 times 0.8741 gives me 34 people. So we've correctly identified 34 people out of these 39 who have the disease with the second test. That means these 34 people had two positive test results. Five people had a positive test result in the first test and a negative test in the second test. So we, we weren't quite as accurate here. In our specificity, we had 153 people who we said had a urinary tract infection, but in this case, we've, we know they probably don't, so we need to identify more of these people. We have an 82.11% uh, uh, speci specific test. We take that 153 times... 0.8211 and we get 125.6 or 126 people that were correctly identified that time. Out of 153 minus 126 that leaves 27 people up here. Our net sensitivity then in this sequence is going to be something very specific. So at the end of the day, the people we, who we've correctly identified in the sequence are these 35 people, or 34 people. These 34 people are correctly identified out of the 60 who we started with in the first place. So we've lost some sensitivity in our process. 34 divided by 60 is going to give us 56.66, or 67 percent. So we had a sensitivity of 87, and in the other test it was 64. We've lost some of that to get a net sensitivity of 56. Our net specificity, however, has increased quite a bit. Because we correctly identified 161 people here. Um, in this note right here, we, we identified 161 people. But we also correctly identified 126 in the next test. So these people were also correctly identified as not having the disease. 126 are identified there out of the 314 in the first place. If we take 161 plus 126, we get 287. And 287 divided by 314 gives us 91.4%. Now that can be really important. We've increased our specificity quite a bit. We've gone from 51 and 82% to 91%. If you notice, those weren't additive. Um, you know, 51.3 and 82.1, and, and they're not an average either. It's just a new calculation net specificity. This characteristic of specificity is going to be important later when we talk about positive predictive value, negative predictive value. But that is the summary of sensitivity and specificity of a test.